Hello there, it's Black Bright, and I'm broadcasting into your homes. If it's the first time you're passing through, you're probably wondering, oh, what's she talking about? Where did she come from? Anyway, I pop up every now and then. Sometimes I pop up in your news feed. Sometimes I pop up in your emails. Sometimes I don't pop up at all. Um, it all depends on who's sharing and what they're sharing. And at the moment, a lot of other stuff is taking precedence over my little humble videos. So please like, subscribe and share. I'd really appreciate it. I operate from the UK um, into your homes around the world. And um, yes, I talk about a various number of subjects that either help you to understand certain things. I hope sometimes they motivate you, sometimes they inform. And yeah, that's basically my purpose. So I wanted to talk today about those countries where there is no COVID-19. There is no reported cases of the coronavirus. Now, there are some um, disputes. There's some countries that are under a tight regime and, you know, sworn under secrecy and stuff like that. But we know that certain countries have not... Um, reported cases of the coronavirus. So that tells us that for us, it means we have hope. Every time you see somebody who you know, somebody in your family, somebody who's in your workplace, somebody who used to be at your workplace, every time you see them and you receive a WhatsApp from them, that tells you that they're alive and that they are well normally. And so we ca cannot get brought down into the doom and gloom that makes us feel as though the whole world is crumbling around us, because we have evidence of places where it does not exist, and we know people who do not have it. And that should give us hope for our future. It should tell us that, okay, Yes, I'm going through this rough little period at the time, for the time being, but whatever's happening to other people, some people are out there working, albeit that they're putting their necks on the line, but some, but some of them are surviving it. Some of them can pay their bills. Some of them have jobs. And if they have it, so can I. My future might not look too great at the moment, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel without sounding too condescending. So the countries who have not reported the coronavirus are, in, in no particular order, Comoros, Kiribati, Lesotho, Marshall Islands, Micronesia, Nauru, North Korea, Palau, Samoa, Seotome and Principe, Solomon Islands, Tajikistan, Tonga, Turkmenistan, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 countries. Yes, 153 have reported cases, but these 17 haven't. That tells us that... There, there's an exclusion. We do not have to get it. We do not have to die. Our life does not have to stop. We don't have to say, well, it's me. We can look at those people who are, are successful and say, yes, that can be me too. So apparently it can be transmitted through mucus and saliva. But how is it spreading? I mean, it's not like all these people are giving each other a French kiss. So how is it spreading at such a remarkable rate when there isn't that close proximity? I mean, to be honest, people, I can understand people in the hospital being in close proximity and getting it. But I'm sure the, not everybody, all these thousands and thousands of people who are dying, can be in close proximity of people's mucus and saliva. But they claim that is how the droplets are spread and contamination takes place. So somehow, 
There are droplets that are coming out of a lot of people that we do not know where they are coming from. That is the question. So that is probably why they're suggesting now, weeks after the case, I mean, really and truly after seeing China and seeing how China contained it, they should have been ordering people in the UK to wear masks. All the people in government, as an example, should be wearing masks to encourage people to wear it. More people are wearing it now if they can get them. But that is what they should be encouraging people to do. But you can always make homemade masks, so there's no excuse. So now, three weeks down the line, oh, people should be wearing masks. It's common sense. They'll tell you, oh, you can't, it doesn't protect you from the disease. But if somebody has the disease, it protects you from getting it if they are wearing a mask. Because all the contagion will go back at them. It won't come out at you. And that is the point. So according to John Hopkins, the, the data varies. I mean, you, you look at one source. You have one set of figures, you look at another source, you have another set of figures. But according to John Hopkins, um, 154,000 worldwide deaths have taken place so far. You know, I have to ask, is it in competition? You know, all this, oh, these deaths here and this number of deaths here. I mean, are they trying to compete with SARS and get the two million? You know, get you know, they're not it's not gonna stop until they reach that quota. Is it something as calculated as that i don't understand why this hype oh this country's only got that one. Oh, and this country's ex exceeded in their deaths and oh what i mean really and truly just state the facts we don't need to know who has exceeded who that is not the issue what we need to know is whether or not it is tailing off we do not want need to know oh um England is the sixth, sixth highest of, of all the countries. We don't need to know that. This is not a competition. But it feels as though there is one. So, and then to make it worse, Trump, even though he says it tongue-in-cheek, he's talking about liberating um, three or four states. Let them go back to, you know, it's just, it's just incredible. That's why I'm saying it's almost like they want it to contaminate people. I mean, why would you say that these states that have got a high um, coronavirus rate of death, oh yeah, they've had, you know, they'll get the herd immunity and they can go back to work, you know, everybody's crying to go back to work. So I'm going to let them go back to work. In fact, I'm going to order them to go back to work. You know, if Trump tells people to go back to work and mingle with everybody else, they're going to have to do that. He's the law. But then that would mean they'd have to stop all these other, um, all these other things in place. I don't know what to say. I don't even know what the answer is. Yes, people want to go back to work, but people want to be safe. So I don't think there is an answer. I think the answer is please test the people. But how can you test millions and millions? It's absolutely impossible. You haven't got that amount of tests, I wouldn't have thought. But ideally, you would test everybody and those who don't have it can go back to work and those that do stay at home and stay isolated or quarantined or whatever. So COVID-19 doesn't have to get to you. Um, like I said, dwelling on it, dwelling on the negatives. You know, at what you feed your brain is actually what happens. If you feed your brain with, oh, my God, this isn't good. This, this might get my mum. This might get my dad. This might get me. You know, I'm, I'm, this, I'm not going to be able to um, get back on my feet. I'm not going to. If you keep telling yourself that and you allow the coronavirus ideology to infect your brain, 
then you too, you might as well say you've been infected with the coronavirus because it would give you so much stress and anxiety and lower your immune system, you'll probably get it. So you do need to change your language as impossible as it looks. You need to change your language and, and look at the positives. Look at those who are doing well. It's hard because you can feel resentful that people are doing well, but look at those who are, um, who are doing well and say, yes, if they can do it, so can I. It hasn't, it hasn't killed this section, so therefore I can also be safe. And just change the language in your mind and be more positive. I'm not going to tell you to be positive because that can be so annoying when everything is crashing you around you and people are saying, oh, be positive, be positive, say positive affirmations. Nothing can be more annoying when you see your, your whole world crumbling and people are telling you to be positive. But what I'm saying is change the language around so that you have a bit of hope, a lot of hope, because that alone will change your mindset. You don't want your brain to be infected with what is going on around the world. Focus it on those people who are doing well and say you're going to join them very soon. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.